We want to thank God for bringing us here this morning. And as I embark on this message, I pray that God, that God will uh, continue to give me the ability to convey his word in a simple manner so that you and I can be saved. You need to understand that when I proclaim God's word, it is not my word. I'm simply a messenger, an instrument. God is using me so that all of us can be fed so that one day we will be saved when the role is called up yonder. And I pray that all of us and those whom you come in contact with, that the word will germinate and break through. And the same kind of essence which Jesus Christ had in the beginning and he conveyed through to the apostles by the Holy Spirit and that you and I will be fashioned in such a way and be an example unto everybody we come in contact with so that they can be saved and they will see Christ in our lives. We're going to be coming from Romans, the book of Romans this morning and it's Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1 and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to become the topic that I have chosen is out of verse 17, uh, faith to faith, but I'm going to be reading from verse uh, 13, so you'll be able to understand what the writer is saying. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I, am, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first, and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it, re as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In the ancient world, you need to understand what he has just written or just said and understand the journey of the gospel. That the gospel, through the dispensation of time and the prophetic will of the Almighty God, that when Jesus Christ came on the scene, he was going to preach to the Jews first and then to the Greek. In Acts chapter 2, we see where the apostles and verse 11, Peter stood up. And he preached to the Jews, and about 3,000 souls were saved. After that, the Samaritans, and after the Samaritans, the Gentiles, in Acts chapter 10, received the gospel, just as all Christ predicted. And so he was saying, listen, I was ended, I was prevented, but I am here now, and I'm letting you know that my... Uh, my aim is to preach the gospel to everybody, not just one single set of people, but to everybody. I'm going to death to the Greeks and to the barbarian, to the wise and to the unwise. And so in verse 17, he said, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. I don't know about you this morning, but I hope that you are able to live by faith to faith. You are able to live, sorry, from faith to faith. It is important that we understand what faith is. One man said that faith is believing in something that you cannot see that will eventually come to pass. You see, you got to have faith in the Almighty God and you have to have faith 
in his word, in his word, in order for you and I to be saved. Uh, many of us who have gone to the doctor, many of us who have gone to a physician, uh, there is what you call the physician with diagnose our problems, or whatever illness that illnesses that we have. And some people will call it all kinds of definitions. And I think it was Sigmund Freud who came up with the idea of the placebo effect, that a person can give you an isomine for an headache, but because you believe that you are going to be healed, you believe you have faith in that isomint or that pill or whatever, it could be a vitamin pill, um, immediately after you take it, you, you start to feel as if it's doing something wrong for you. It is that faith and that trust that you have in that thing. Why your concept and your feelings and your emotions start to want change. But I need you to understand that God operates on a higher level or on a higher frequency. And in order for you and I to finish this race, we have to have faith in the Almighty God. You see, from faith to faith is an expression found in some versions of Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 and verse 17, such as the King James Version, the New American Standard Bible, and the Christian Standard Bible. The English Standard Version uses wording from faith for faith instead. The meaning of the phrase becomes more evident in the New International Version by faith from first to last, and perhaps the most transparent rendering of the verse of today's reading is found in the New Living Translation from faith start to finish by faith. From faith start to finish by faith. To fully understand what faith to faith means, we must consider the phrase in its context. In the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, the apostles introduces himself to the church in Rome. While many of the believers that Many of the believers there would have heard of Paul, they had not yet met him personally. And in preparation for a future visit, Paul wants the, mem the members of the church to know him sufficiently to discern fact from fiction concerning his identity. In Romans chapter 1, 16 to 17, Paul reaches the high point of his introductory greeting to the church in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of who of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jews first and also the Gentiles. This good news, this good news, this gospel, tell us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. It is by faith we understand how we start this race. It is by faith we are going to understand how to finish this walk, this race. As the scripture says, it is true faith that a righteous person has eternal life. The NLT, the New Living Translation Version. Nothing mattered more to Paul than fulfilling God's will for his life which was to preach the good news of salvation. Without the good news of the gospel and without the power of that is the gospel, there can be no salvation, no freedom from sin, no redemption, no eternal life. The power of the gospel is the theme of Paul's letter to the Romans and the ambition of his life. And I hope and trust Brethren, as we traverse this world and as we go through, this becomes our main purpose in life. That is to preach Christ and Him crucified. To understand that our life consists and it is in the essence of the gospel that you and I breathe. This transformed life which we are living is by 
what Paul is declaring to the Romans this morning. Paul writes with full knowledge that the church in Rome is facing persecution and suffering under Romans' uh, uh, oppression, Romans' persecution. Many of the believers, they are experiencing humiliation and shame because, their faith in, because of their faith in Christ. I've read recently how, how a, a minister was killed in Africa because of his faith, because he was preaching. I have read also recently in India, where Christians in India are being persecuted, who are, have been slaughtered, who have been driven from their homes because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Paul wants them to be assured that the world power of Rome cannot hold a candle to the mighty power of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That gospel is God's limitless power directed towards the salvation of men and women. For every person who believes, whether Jew or Gentiles, man or woman, black or white, the gospel effectively becomes the saving grace, the saving power of God. Paul tells the Roman Christians that in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Righteousness is thus a complete and a total work of God. Humans, humans tend to view the righteousness as something we can achieve by our own merit or action. But the righteousness of God is different. It is a right standing before God that has nothing to do with human ac accomplishment or work. It is received by faith. There is nothing we can do to deserve it or earn it. It is received by faith. It is received by trusting in God. This morning we talk about the examples of Jesus Christ. And as you sit in the pews, I, 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 I want you to understand it is Christ who is the author of and the finisher of our faith, of the race that we are in. And so please, brethren, I want you to understand this. The exact meaning of Paul's phrase from faith to faith has been debated with several plausible explanations proposed. Some understand it in relation to the origin of faith, from the faith of God, who makes the offer, the, makes the offer of salvation to the faith of men who receive it. In, in simple terms, salvation comes from God's faith, our faithfulness to our faith. This was Karl Barth's impression of the faith, of the phrase faith from faith to faith, that salvation is, ac is accomplished through God's faithfulness, which comes first, and our faith in response to, to that. Other believes, believe that Paul had the spreading of faith through evangelism in mind, from the faith of one believer to another. A third, a widely accepted understanding is that from faith to faith speaks of a progressive, a progression, growing development of faith from one degree of faith to the other. A king to, to ever increasing glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18. But let me ask you this this morning. <coughs> once we trust in God, once we believe in God, aren't you exercising your faith in Him? The Bible said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? shall be saved. Uh, what does this mean? It means that we must trust and have faith in what God sets us out to do. Last week I said, I give you the example. Those 
who was in the back, um, those who weren't in the Bible class, let me give it again. That the water separated Jamaica from America. That America, uh, Jamaica is an island. But the missionaries, they had faith in Jesus, Jesus' word. When Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, 18 and 19, to his, the, his, his, his disciples, the apostles, go into all the world and what? And preach the gospel. Now, the missionary, the missionaries trust in that command because of their faith in what Jesus Christ in, instructed the apostles to do and they are following what the apostles did because of their faith they left America they came to Jamaica and in 1991 June 14 came to my house and they taught me the gospel and by their faith I was what? I was saved but also because of my trust and my belief in the what? In the gospel. I started to uh, trust in God, having what? Faith in God. And because I am having faith in God, there began a journey of trust, of faith in whom? In God. And it has led me here what? today. Preaching the gospel what? to you. Amen, church? And so, faith to faith, I am saying to you that it is in the gospel that we are going to experience this faith. And we must abide in this faith. We must abide in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though we are undergoing tremendous persecution. Persecution does, uh, can be by the government of oppression, by the high rise of inflation, by the high uh, prices of food, or uh, whatever it may be. The circumstances may be some form of health issue that Jesus Christ can identify with this. But you must remain faithful. That's what Jesus uh, Paul says. That the just shall live by faith. If you are, you can't live by anything else. That you must trust God as you live. You and I must continue to trust God. You and I must continue to live by faith. If we are going to be saved. Oh, it was Paul who said, I have kept the what? The faith. And because I have kept Second Timothy chapter 4. And because I have, and verse 8, 7 and 8. And because I have kept the faith, there is a crown that is laid out in heaven for, for me. You understand what I'm saying? So he started out on the journey. And he finished. He started with faith. And he finished with what? Faith. And, and because he finished with faith. It, it, it accounted to him. For righteousness. And because he finished with faith. He's awaiting. Well done. Good and faithful servant. He's awaiting that statement. From the almighty God. So I'm saying that stand resolute. Stand in Christ regardless of what is happening. The Romans in the ancient world, they, they, were, they, they were being, the church at Rome was being persecuted physically. But Paul said, hey, the essence of you being saved is to trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ regardless of what is happening and happening in your life personally. So I'm saying this morning, church, regardless of what is happening, I know I have to still trust in Jesus Christ. I know I have to still exercise faith in the Almighty God. And um, 
And, and I said, as long as you trust in God, God is a God of hope. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of also difficulties and trauma. Oh, yes. God is a God of difficulty and trauma. God understands persecution. He understands trial. Check Jesus and he will let you know all about this. That he can uh, identify with your experience. He's able to identify with your what? Experience. He is not immune to your difficulties. And in his experience, and in Jesus Christ's humiliation, he says, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Thy will be done in the Garden of Gethsemane. So in all your ways, I need you to acknowledge it. Even when you can't see the outcome, hold on to God's what? Unchanging hand. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. From faith to what? To faith. It was Stephen in Acts chapter 7 that when the mob ran upon him because he preached Jesus Christ. And when they stoned him, verse 57, uh, 53 to 58, and when they stoned him, he said, Father, forgive them, because they know not what they have done. In his, mom, in his last breath, he what? He kept the faith, brother said. From faith he began in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and even though he was going through tremendous persecution, he died keeping the what? Keeping the faith. Church of Christ, come this morning. I am asking you that you allow God to help you to keep the faith. If you are not a Christian this morning, and it is imperative that you give your life to Christ, if you are not a Christian, it is imperative that you understand that you need to walk with Jesus Christ. You need to have a relationship with Jesus, Jesus Christ. Because it is true, um, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll be able to, 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 to be triumphant. You'll be able to be victorious in, in critical and trying situations. If you are not a Christian, Jesus invites you to come to him. And it is by faith you are going to hear God's word. And the Bible said you must believe in order for you to be saved. The next thing that God said that you need to repent. In Luke chapter 13, the Bible, from verse uh, uh, 3 through to 5. He said, I tell you nay, unless you repent, you shall perish. He also said that we, you need to confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You will be amazed that even now the Jews, there were some who were denying Jesus Christ when he, that he is the Son of God, even though they knew that he was going to come through prophecy. And right now there are people who are denying that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. They don't believe. Of the, the, apostle claim, the apostles claim they don't believe in the eyewitnesses account. They don't believe in the archaeologists account. They don't believe in the, the Jewish historians account. They don't believe that Jesus Christ came and lived. But you must, because the gospel of Jesus Christ according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, inches on the death the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in that chapter, there were members, about 2,000 persons who uh, claim, make this the, uh, 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 statement of seeing Jesus Christ risen from the grave. And if we're going to live by faith, if you're going to live by faith, you must be born again. Just like in Acts chapter 2, one of the greatest questions, if not the greatest question ever asked, what must I do to be saved? 
they weren't in any great danger at the time, but they were in a great danger of being separated from Jesus Christ. And so he's making reference to an eternal home, an eternal life with Christ. And about 3,000 souls were buried, were covered up on the water, and they were born again. If you need your life to be restored, don't be afraid because Simon the Sassara, he was a Christian, and when he saw the miracles, he wanted to purchase the miracles with money. He was already a Christian. He didn't re baptize again, but what he did, he repented. That there's room that if you find that you're backslidden and you're not walking with God, you can walk forward and ask the church to pray for you and you can repent from your sin and start walking in a straight line with Jesus again and start walking from faith to faith. I hope and trust this morning that you and I continue to walk in faith so that all of us can be blessed when Jesus comes again. Why don't we stand as we sing?